Hello and welcome to a new video about Prometics. This time we're going into details about the compressor. First thing we need to do, suck in air, compressed air, and then we have compressed air. And we want to work with compressed air. That's what it is about. So let's have a look into different types of compressors. It should not give you a complete overview, I just want to show you some usual concepts. Okay. And one of those usual concepts, a very usual one, you see here. I tried to draw a little bit uh, a compressor. Yeah. From the outside, somehow looks like that. I tried to... to, to show it a little bit how it looks yeah however please be aware this is not a construction uh, this should only show how it's working in principle so this thing here is a piston compressor piston compressor let's have a look inside yeah i will let's let's open let's make the uh casings transparent yeah? You see, there is a crankshaft inside, there is a piston inside, and if the crankshaft is turning, uh, the piston is moving up and down. Uh. Nah. Maybe I should grab it here. Yeah, this is working better now. Uh. You see, so the, it's, we are using an oscillating piston inside there. So, let's cut the thing open, I would suggest. Uh, so let's cut it open. Yes. Maybe we should... Cut it in the middle of the of the cylinder. Uh, okay. Now we can again make those things appear solid. So, basically, what do we have here? We have one intake side, yeah? it's the left side, and we have one pressure side, that's the right side. If we are in top position, if the piston is in top position, yeah, and we are starting to, to go down, yeah? so if the crankshaft is moving up and then starting to go down, yeah? here, this valve will there is a spring usually also, spring loaded, so this valve will pack open. Yeah? And this valve here will automatically close because here there will be pressure lower than here. Yeah? The pressure inside the, the cylinder is, is lower than here. Yeah? And if the piston is going further down, we simply suck in air from this side, from the suction side. Usually on this side there is also a filter. No? And then we reach the point where we have the lowest part. Eh? And then we are moving up. Suddenly the pressure inside here is rising. Because of the pressure rising, this valve book will close. Yeah? And if the pressure inside here is rising, 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 is higher than on this side, this valve here book, will open. Okay? And now we move all the air to the pressure side. Yeah? This is how this is working. So we're pumping one after the other. We don't even need some camshaft or something like this, like in an engine, because the, the valves will open and close automatically, simply because of the pressure difference. Yeah. Usually there are also springs, which put them in a default position. However, there is no need of, of very sophisticated valve control. Yeah. This is how this is working. Always get one volume after the other to the other side. Piston compressor. 
very usual, very usual uh, thing. Okay. You also see this is one type of compressor where we have to get this air inside here to the other side. We, we have to move it. So maximum value of pressure here on piston compressors are usually six bars, around six bars. If you have two stage compressors, so one stage after the other, we can reach up to 10 bars, 15 bars also. Uh, quite high pressures. Uh, in worst case, if there is the maximum pressure, we will simply compress the air until the maximum pressure yeah, and then expand it. Or if this valve is never opening, we will simply compress the air. Yeah. Getting hot. This is why we have these cooling ribs here. Yeah, this cooling elements. So, piston, oscillating piston compressor. Then another possibility, also bringing air to the other side, is this here. Yeah. This looks now a little bit weird, right? These are two runners, screw type compressor. Yeah. Rotary screw type compressors. These two runners, they are specially formed, so they are sealed in the middle. Yeah? And if one is turning, the other one is turning too. Yeah? And those volumes here on the outer parts of the runners, they are moved from this side to this side. Yeah? Because they are in a casing. Yeah? I show you. Here is the casing, here are the runners. Yeah? So, whatever is between the casing and the runners, those type of volume, this has simply to go to the other side because in the middle the two runners are sealed, sealing each other. So, we are moving the air volume from this side to the other side. You can also see it in the animation. This is how this is working. Screw type compressor. Screw type compressor. We can also reach around 10 bars with them. And they are continuously in the piston compressor we have pulses. They are continuously delivering air. And this is a big advantage here. And they are also, since there is not no oscillation, they are usually not that that loud. One other possibility of shoveling air to the other side is something like this rotary vane compressor. This is called. Yeah? So here is the intake, and those red bars, yeah, they are allowed to travel radial out and in. Yeah? This is the spring loaded, you see, the four is the spring. They are spring loaded, so they will always touch the casing. And there is an eccentric rotary element inside there. You see it will rotate in this direction. So we will suck in air here and this area will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger yeah? until we connect to the exit. Yeah? Then this here is coming to, to here. Yeah? It will seal the in, inlet. Yeah? So the other side will seal the inlet and then we are moving this out, we are shoveling, pushing the air out to the outlet. Yeah. Rotary vane compressors. Also, we have to get rid of the air. Yeah. Clear? Uh, so, w there is a need of airflow, simply. Rotary vane compressors. Some compressors do not have the need of airflow. Yeah? For instance, there are axial compressors. Yeah? They are looking like this. Typical application already, jet engine. Yeah? You can see here are fans. Yeah? 
some of them are fixed and some of them are moving. The first ones are fixed yeah? and then there is a moving. The, 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 the inner part is moving yeah? and it's just like a fan, yeah? like a cooling fan, something like this. But however, not one, but several stages one after the other. And every time in between we do have fixed plates, rotary plates, fixed plate, rotary plates, fixed plate, rotary plates. So actually we are accelerating the air in this direction from here, from the intake to here. We are accelerating the air uh, due to several fans after each other. The fixed plates are there that the next plates can still accelerate uh, because the first plates they already made a little whirlwind uh, to break the whirlwind because you know if you have a whirlwind and just go there is no relative movement uh, you cannot accelerate in axial direction so you need to have those stator blades also which will slow down the whirlwind so that we can only accelerate in one direction uh, these are the stator blades and you see usually also it's narrowing down. Yeah. Axial compressor, this is called. Also heavily used, here you see a picture. This time the, the inlet is on the right side. You can easily see it because from right to left the room is getting narrower. Yeah. And you can also see these and the cut away piece, the, the things which are still there, there's are running places. And in between you see always the stator plates. Okay. Axial compressor. Axial compressor not only used in jet engines like these, yeah, but also used in, in static, static applications. Yeah. We can reach up to six bars with them. Yeah. So main thing is we are adding kinetic energy and because we we block at the end yeah it's streaming it's a congestion yeah there there is simply there's simply resistance streaming resistance so this kinetic energy will be transferred to potential energy to pressure energy a very close relative, let's call it, yeah, to the axial compressor is the radial compressor or also in English uh, centrifugal compressor called. Yeah. How is this looking? It's also some sort of fan. Here you can see this fan. However, the intake is axial like before and the exit is radial. Yeah. So it will suck in air if you have if you're rotating it this way, yeah, it will suck in air here and blow it radially away. Okay. Looks very complicated. Heavily in use. Heavily in use. Yeah. One typical application you see here. Yeah? Turbo. Turbocharger. Here is the radial compressor. Yeah? Suck in air here and move it out radially. Yeah? This is the turbine from the exhaust gases yeah, will be spinned up and this is the compressor which will lead to charge. We need more air in the combustion area. Yeah. yeah. So turbos heavily in use in automotive uh, automobile industry. Typical application you see here is the runner and it looks like this one. Uh, radial compressor. Sometimes radial compressors, here we also have a picture of a radial compressor. This is again a jet engine. Uh, and here we all also see there is a, a first stage also. Uh, two stage compressors. One axial, one radial compressor. Uh, so radial compressors can also be applied in stages. So one stage after the other. Uh, and then if we have a more stage approach, we can reach even up to 10 bars. However, it's basically it's the same trick like an XL compressors. Accelerate the air, then break it down, yeah? 
and and make it slower and then the kinetic energy which is brought in by the runner will then be converted to potential energy up to 10 bars and at multi-stage approach yeah? typical multi-stage approach i also show you now here uh, again a jet engine yeah? here axial compressors one two three four five stages and one stage radial compressor and here's the combustion area and here is the turbine driving all those things compressors like said these are not the only type of compressors there are also compressors which uh, you know scroll compressors for instance yeah there are two, there are two Scro scrolls yeah spirals which interlock to each other there is for instance uh, from Volkswagen there was the G the so-called G loader yeah? and so on there's a root blower for instance uh, in the old Bentleys a root a root compressor was used to not a turbocharger to charge the engine supercharge the engine so it's not the only only ways on how to compress air yeah. however it just just show you there are several ways yeah, and show you some principles because the working principles of the others you know they have more sophisticated forms of pistons and so on and on rotary vanes and however the working principles are similar and this is what I tried to show you now uh, so these working working principles basic working principles there's another topic an Andres Fach yeah where you will learn a lot of this stuff yeah? how those machines are working yeah? however in terms of automation technology that's it what you hear from me from for compressors next time now we have compressed there yeah, next time we're talking about drying this air yeah. why we need to dry compressed air we will hear in next video and how we dry compressed air we will also hear in next video so for this time thank you very much for listening and goodbye